Mr. Corbyn, thank you very much for, um, for coming here. Thank uh, you. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, you famously said during this campaign you were seven and a half out of ten in favour of remaining. Now you're two and a half. The two and a half side of your intellect has won, and the seven and a half has been abandoned. How do you see the future now? Are you an enthusiastic Brexiter now? Well, the British people have made the decision. We must respect that result, and Article 50 has to be invoked now so that we negotiate an exit from the European Union. I think uh, a lot of the message that's come back from this is that uh, many communities are fed up with uh, cuts they've had, fed up with uh, economic dislocation, and feel very angry at the way they've been betrayed and marginalized by successive governments in very poor areas of the country. And my point throughout the campaign was that we had to have an alternative to austerity. We had to have greater resources going into areas where there's been huge changes. And I strongly called for the introduction of a migrant impact fund, as well as proper funding of local authorities. The results, obviously, are different across the country, different between densely populated urban areas and other parts of the country. We now have to try and protect the working conditions that we have in this country and in the negotiations with the European Union try to obviously ensure there are some trade opportunities for Britain because clearly there are some very difficult days ahead. The value of the pound has already fallen and there will therefore be job consequences as a result of this decision. But, but we why... have to do everything we can to try and protect jobs and working conditions yes. in Britain. If you want to do everything you can to protect jobs and working conditions, why do you want an abrupt uh, Article 50, i.e. we give you two years to get out, rather than what Daniel Hannan here a moment ago was suggesting, which was take it easy. Go and talk to them in Europe, think about it, discuss it here, work out a strategy, and gently, gently you'll do much better than rushing headlong into Article 50. Obviously there has to be a strategy, but the whole point of the referendum was that the public would be asked their opinion, they've given their opinion, and I think it's up to Parliament to now act upon that opinion. But quite clearly, negotiations must take place, there must be the best deal possible in order to uh, ensure strong industries in Britain remain strong and strong industries that have big export markets uh, in retain those export markets as far as we can. But we are in some very difficult areas. That's very obvious to everybody. The accusation that Labour was half-hearted, and you in particular were rather half-hearted, with your seven and a half, I don't know what you mean by that, seven and a half out of ten support for the EU, do you think you could have won this thing if you had been 10 out of 10 for remaining in the EU? The point I made throughout the campaign, the point the Labour Party made throughout the campaign was there were many people who were not particularly happy with the European Union. The point I was making was there were good things that had come from Europe in working conditions and environmental protections, but there were other issues that had not been addressed properly, particularly economic inequalities in Britain. And therefore, I said that my project was that we should vote to remain in order to change and reform the European Union and put forward an economic strategy which isn't austerity, isn't punishing the poorest, which is actually trying to ensure that everyone gets a fair crack of the whip. What about immigration? Because you clearly laid out your view of immigration, which was there was no upper limit to immigration into this country. Many of the people who... Uh, support you, I suspect, but who voted to leave, believe there should be an upper limit. And you were very clear. I remember seeing you say it to yeah. Andrew Marr, no upper limit. Uh, what I was clear that, about was that was, a mistake? What I was clear about was that within the single market in the European Union, there has to be free movement of people. And uh, that we should also recognize that uh, more than a million British people live in other parts of Europe, and indeed, probably almost another million work at various times in other parts of Europe. And so, if we remain in the single market, then quite clearly, free movement takes place. But the very strong point I was making was that there had to be an end to the undercutting of wages, there had to be an end to the destroying of working conditions in this country by people being brought in by unscrupulous employers. The point I was making was that nobody should be exploited and we should face that down through the uh, posting of workers directive. If um, we no longer have an obligation 
to take anybody who wishes to come here from the European Union to work. What would your policy, Labour's policy, be on immigration? Well, at the moment, there is uh, controlled immigration from the rest of the world. There are often great difficulties over family reunion. There are people that come in with particular skill sets and particular jobs. We will obviously have to develop an immigration policy which will be applying to Europe as well as to the rest of the world. But I think we should also recognize that uh, those that have migrated to this country have made an enormous contribution to our society. Indeed, there are uh, 50,000 odd people from other parts of Europe working in our National Health Service. and so. It is um, an important issue and we have to recognize the skill sets that many have brought to this country and given us uh, often yes, a very but, good standard but, of living. But, but do you, uh, that's interesting, but do you accept that one of the reasons people voted to leave was because they thought immigration was too high? Whether they were right or wrong about that in your view, they did think that. Many probably did, but there's also the question of the impact of migration and the lack of government support for areas that have been most affected. So many of the poorest communities in Britain have had the biggest cuts in central government expenditure to support their local authorities and at the same time been, been refused any special help to deal with issues of school places and um, health places, which are often actually quite temporary issues, but nevertheless very important that central government recognises those needs. You make an elegant, uh, an elegant description uh, about the problems that are there, but do you think you, you just missed a trick here, which was that people were much more worried about actual numerical immigration than you gave them credit for? You always said, oh, well, it would be all right if there were more housing. It would be all right if uh, we stopped people being sent on lower wages, all the posted workers directed and all that sort of stuff. Actually, it was the numbers people were worried about. Well, I made those points because that is what I believe to be the right way forward, to end the exploitation of people, whoever they are, and ensure that our local authorities are properly funded in all parts of this country. This government has a strategy of systematically and quite deliberately underfunding all local authorities in the very poorest areas of this country that face the greatest problems. Uh, Mr Corbyn, what would you like to see the Prime Minister do now? Do you think there should be... Do you think there should be an election quite soon, say in the autumn, because we've had a Prime Minister who urged us to remain and the country decided to leave and it needs new policies? The Prime Minister has some very urgent tasks ahead of him straight away, one of which is to try to stabilise the value of the pound, the other is to try and ensure the continuation of long-term investment in manufacturing and other industries and then to begin the negotiations on the trade arrangements that are with the European Union. More than half our exports already go to the European Union. Thousands of companies all over the country rely on trade with the European Union. That relationship with the European Union after exit is absolutely crucial to the economic future of this country. And I, I hope the Prime Minister is going to be concentrating very urgently on, uh, on that. What, what he does in the longer term is a matter for him to decide what he wants to do and what the Conservative Party wants to do. Our position is that we will oppose any urgent budget that causes great cuts and further austerity on people. We will support spending more resources in the areas hardest hit by both the recession and changes and that we will try to get ready for a society where there is a greater degree of fairness and equality and obviously effective and efficient trading relationships with the rest of the world. And in the meantime, in the national interest, you want Prime Minister and Chancellor of the Exchequer to stay in place. I want them to decide now, quickly, what they're going to do to try and stabilise the value of the pound and then they will no doubt be making a statement to the House on Monday. The important thing is to try to protect jobs at the present time. Those jobs are partly dependent on the value of the currency and obviously the export markets that are available. Mr Corbyn, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much.